So welcome to lesson 11 in this 13 part tutorial on making your own Pac-Man game in Scratch. In this lesson what we're going to look at is adding a lives counter for Pac-Man because at the moment you can see that he's able to collect all the yellow pills and he's able to get caught by the ghost. However, he can get caught by the ghost an unlimited number of times and that's not good. So we're going to put a, a counter in there, a lives counter. We'll start with three lives and then every time he's caught by the ghost the counter will go down by one and then when we get to zero lives the game ends. We'll have a great big game over message in the front and, and the only way to continue is to start all over again. So let's see how we do that. I'm going to start off with the Pac-Man sprite selected and we're in the code window. And this is the block of code we added in the last lesson where when we receive the Got Pac-Man, we do the sound effect of Pac-Man dying. We hide, wait three seconds, go back to the beginning and then spawn. So we're going to add in um, the counter now for lives. That's going to be a variable. So we'll start by going to the variables section here and clicking make a variable. We'll call this lives. Click OK. And this appears on the screen here because it's got the little blue box with a white tick in it here. And this again is something we probably do want the user to see, the player rather, to see. So we'll put that at the top there so they can see the number of lives they've got. Once you understand how to do all the coding in this Scratch game, you may decide to change this so that instead of showing the variable, you have three little heart symbols. And each time the number of lives goes down, the hearts go down as well. So you could always look into that possibility as well. So now we've got the uh, lives, we need to set them to three as soon as the game begins. So remember, I'm in the Pac-Man sprite here and I'm looking at the green flag, which is what starts the whole game running. I'm going to bring this code down slightly and right at the beginning of the game, we're going to set lives to three. Now, you don't have to use three, of course, you could be more generous than that if you want to and give them five lives. And again, you can always extend this game by having fruit or something else appear randomly inside the maze so that when Pac-Man eats that, he gets a bonus life. So that's something else that you can look into adding uh, after you've done the whole game. So now when we click the green flag, you can see that lives on the right hand side now appears as three. But of course, every time Pac-Man is caught, we want that to go down by one. So in the when I receive got Pac-Man, which is what tells Pac-Man he's been eaten by a ghost, we need to then reduce the lives by one. So what I'm going to do is just pull that down. Actually, I'll pull down underneath the sound effect there. The sound effect takes a couple of seconds to run. Um, I'm going to go into the variables section here and get the change lives by. And to make this number go down, we simply type a negative in there. So we'll lose one life, so that's minus one. So now every time Pac-Man is caught, the number of lives goes down by one. And so we go from three lives to two lives to one life to zero lives to minus one life to minus two life and so on. We haven't put a stop uh, when we get to zero. So that's something else we'll need to do. So we will need to have a, an if block that says if we have got zero lives, then end the game. So let's grab ourselves an if block here. And what I'm going to do, uh, we've got uh, in this section the sound effect, the changing of lives, so it has to be after that block. We hide Pac-Man, wait three seconds, move him to the beginning and then show. And actually we want to do all of that code apart from showing Pac-Man. So I'll put this if block just in between the go to coordinates and show. So if what? Well, if lives is equal to zero. So for an is equal block, we need to go to operators. So there is the something equals something block. We'll put that inside there. So we need to know if lives is equal to zero. Let's go to variables and grab the lives variable and put it on the left. 
and then type a zero in the box on the right. So if lives does equal zero, then what do we want to do? Well, we're going to end the game. So what we can do is go to control and grab the block that says stop all. And that block there will actually end the game. It'll stop every sprite from doing anything else in the whole game. All the code will stop. But actually, just before we run that, we want to be able to get the game over message appearing in the middle of the screen. So what we'll do is just before the stop all is we'll send out a message. So what we'll do is go to the um, events section over on the left here. We'll grab the broadcast message. Now at the moment we've got broadcast got Pac-Man. Uh, we'll change that. So we'll grab there. We'll just, oops, let me just click on that. Uh, so let me just bring this up to the top here so you can see this. I'm going to click on got Pac-Man and uh, go type in new message and this will just simply type uh, game over. So that tells all the other sprites in the whole game that the game is over. So let's grab this and put this just before the stop all. If we put it afterwards, then of course this line of code won't run. Uh, in fact, nothing else will run after the stop all, including the show block at the bottom here which means that when Pac-Man has been hidden for the last time, he will remain hidden and will be invisible the next time we try and play the game, which in fact you can see has happened on the right here. So we need to make sure if we ever have a hide block in the code for a sprite, that somewhere right after the green flag, we also put back a show block, just to make sure that that character doesn't end up spawning invisibly next time. So we're broadcasting this game over message right before the game ends, but how are we gonna show the text? Well, that actually is simply gonna be another sprite. So I'm gonna click down here in the choose a sprite box and click on the paintbrush. Now I'm going to click on the text button here, the capital T for text, and choose a nice bright color that's gonna show up against the background. I think yellow is a good color for this. And I'm simply going to click anywhere in this window and then type in great big friendly capital letters, game over, like that. Then I'm gonna click on the arrow and you can see that I can now drag this out to make this nice and big. And I'm looking over here uh, to have a look at what sort of size looks good to me. And I want it to be quite large, like that. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's not lined up over here because, of course, we can click and drag it into position in the game area on the right. I think that looks about right there. I think that'll do. Somewhere in the middle like that looks nice and clear. So what we need to do now, if I click on the code tab at the top, so now we don't forget we're in this sprite 11. I can call this the game over sprite or text sprite or whatever if you wanted to. Uh, but we want one thing to happen in here. Um, we want it to appear whenever it receives the message game over. So in the events section, when I receive game over, we need it to show. Of course, the problem is it's showing already. So something else we'll need to do is to make sure that when we click the green flag, we hide this block. So we have this game over uh, sprite here, hidden when we begin playing the game. So if I click the green flag, that's now hidden, and it will be shown whenever it receives the message game over. And that message game over will be broadcast by Pac-Man if lives is equal to zero. So let's try running the game now. So let's click the full screen, let's click the green flag. So we can see that lives at the top are now showing at three. So let's go up here and just get ourselves caught by the Pac-Man. So we've now got lives set to two. Let's go back up and get caught again. There we go. Lives now down to one. So this will be the last time we'll get caught. There we go. 
go. So lives is zero, there's a three second pause, and then game over. And you can see it doesn't matter what keys I type on the keyboard now, all of the code has stopped. Pac-Man is invisible, he's gone. Uh, this uh, ghost has stopped moving, so everything is now frozen. And if I click the green flag, you'll see we're back to the beginning. Pac-Man's back, all the uh, pills are back, the score's set to zero, lives back up to three. So there we go. So we've now got our um, lives counter, so Pac-Man can die, the game can end, which is ideal. So we've now got something for Pac-Man to collect, and we've also got the threat of the ghosts. But if you've ever played the real Pac-Man game, you'll know that there's an extra thing that Pac-Man can collect. And those are the super pills, slightly larger pills. And when he eats them, the ghosts turn blue, they get scared of him, and he can eat them. So rather than them being the threat, he can now eat the ghosts for extra points. So in lesson 12, the penultimate lesson in this series, we're going to add that feature.